So I got this new iPhone 12 to replace my old Canon camera, which died. And I'm liking it, except for the one fact that I can't connect it to a tripod. So I made a mount for it, and I just need to make sure that I have threads to screw it into. And I was thinking, well, tripods use quarter 20, which is one of the most common types of threads around. And I looked around in the basement of the makerspace. Sure enough, I don't have to buy one. I found just a random quarter 20 nut. And it does fit. Look at that. So, I'm already 3D printing the part. And look at that. It's only going to take probably another 45 minutes to print. Quite small, but I can easily glue that to the back of my phone. Oh, and also the tally-ho mechanism is coming along. That's for a future video. So over here, I have the model. So you see this nut will go right in there. We'll glue it in place. How I made this was you start with a square and I extruded it out and made a blocky little design. And then I add this, a subsurface multiplier. And what that does is it smooth, smooths it out. But whenever you first turn it on, it looks like this. It's all gl gloopy because it's just, it, it, it's just, uh, rounding everything. So instead what you want to do, now this is the superpower. You go to line select and you select all these. So I have these lines selected and now the secret weapon, the crease tool. Shift E and now you can do between zero and one, put one. Hit enter. And now you have that. If you do this one, it brings it out like that. But you can easily, you can easily uh, make a, a controlled curved surface. But now we need to have an indentation for this. So I've made this the, the right size. So once I got my measurement, I could make this replica of a hex nut like that. And then we click on this. Okay, so this is known as cylinder and this is cube. We add a Boolean for cylinder and make it difference. Now if I hit H to hide that, look at that. It has now cut that out of it. And whenever we hit apply, this is now in the geometry of it. Look at that. It's actually, it's applied to it. But there's one last thing that you must do if you want it printable. So we load it into our software and we see that, well, inside of it, if we go to slice, So what you see here, if I go through the layers, what I've had to do is I've had to make it a cone because if you have that just flat, then the 3D printer can't print over flat because it's like it's like the road runner. Or it's like Wiley e. Coyote trying to build a bridge and it just falls over. So what you have to do is you have to make it a cone. That way it can slowly print it smaller and also give room for any longer tripod bolts that make it a cone i found that making these uh things cones actually makes it really easy to print them because you don't need supports and it, it can it can print an upside down cone really well it can't print just like it, it can't just extrude over that'd be like welding off of a piece of metal 
So for that, I did the same thing, except for I, I go into here, I hit E to extrude, I move it over, I hit W, merge at center. And now we have, we have a cone on that. And we can do the same thing of cutting that out of the piece. And what we're left with is this one, where it has the cone already built in. All right, that's enough talking. It should be going quicker now, now that it's up at the top piece. Speaking of cones, I did the same thing with this gear on the Tally Ho project because I needed to have a pin go in there, but I can't just have a open uh, shaft with a cap on the end. I have to have a cone. So on that print, you can see I actually, I made it print a cone on the inside. With this one, I went a step further then because I realized I could actually put a cap and print this one in that direction. So then I can have this without any support and then I can take this part, 3D print it, and it'll glue right into there. I could do this. And then what I can do is I can, I can glue that in there so that that is held captive and it doesn't even need a locking mechanism. I can just glue this peg into that cone. So it makes it so that you don't have to have any support and then also it helps it helps center it into the the gear so i really like using cones for that sort of thing i spent a lot of time on this one it is complicated Oh, I just realized I forgot the hole. I mean, that's fine, but the model I upload that's now in the in the description, it'll have that hole in it. I, I forgot. It's funny, I can't film most of this because I don't have a tripod mountable camera. So uh, I drilled a little hole, went quite well. So it's been an hour and turns out that plastic has inhibited it from drying. So it's still liquidy in there and the nut just came out. Meanwhile, this is hard. So I need to dry it like this. I kinda, you'll still have to hold it by hand since I'm recording the camera and I haven't made the tripod mount yet, yeah. kinda funny. So the iPhone is 131 and a half millimeters wide. So, There should be the middle. Yeah, that's the middle of the phone. So 40 and 3 quarters. That should be. So that's how I can measure the insides. Let's see. If this is a failure, I should be able to undo this because this E6000 is a little bit rubbery. Okay. 
Well, guys, looks like this was actually a bad idea because the E6000 had too much surface area and would take weeks for it to dry because this little piece, after 24 hours, I was messing with it and it fell right off and it was still liquidy. So I took it all off. I see it actually, the E6000 seems to have picked up some of the green coloring from the PLA that I printed this from. But I've decided that 3M double-sided tape should work pretty good. And judge for yourself. And I can't really get it off too easily either. I could get it off, but it would be very difficult, more than the average strength. 